Howdy! I'm Melissa. Thank you so much for following along as I explore the unique charm of Japan's Takarazuka Review. So in last week's episode, I looked at the Takarazuka graduation, that is, the process of leaving Takarazuka. In this week's episode, I'm going to be looking at a really important decision that all Takarazuka actresses must make, as I attempt to answer the question, how does an actress decide to be an otokoyaku or musumeyaku? So I'll be looking at when and how actresses make the decision to play male roles or female roles on the Takarazuka stage. I'll also be touching on exactly how clear the separation is between otokoyaku and musumeyaku. For example, can an actress change their mind later in their career and do otokoyaku sometimes play musumeyaku roles or vice versa? So first, let's take a look at exactly what an otokoyaku and musumeyaku are. In Takarazuka, all actresses are separated into two groups, otokoyaku who play the male roles on stage and musumeyaku who play the female roles on stage. However, the differences between otokoyaku and musumeyaku are much more broad than just the assignment of roles. Off stage, otokoyaku are expected to maintain short, boyish haircuts, dress in more masculine clothing when entering and exiting the theatre and in photo shoots, so that's definitely no skirts or dresses, and project a more typically masculine image in interviews and interactions with fans. Musumeyaku, meanwhile, typically have long hair, dress exceptionally feminine, so while pants are an option, skirts and dresses are much more common, and project a very feminine image. So for example, in Takarazuka's monthly magazines, Otokoyaku would generally talk about more traditionally masculine topics like cars and driving, while Musumiyaku will tend to talk about more traditionally feminine topics like hair, makeup and accessories. In addition, as I've talked about in previous episodes, in Takarazuka, Otokoyaku are really the stars. Otokoyaku, and not just top stars, do traditionally have many more fans than Musumiyaku. In addition, they will tend to be the focus of more interviews in Takarazuka's magazines, on television, and in merchandise. In Takarazuka's productions, there will always be more main roles for Otokoyaku than for Musumeyaku. If you are wondering why there is such a focus on Otokoyaku in Takarazuka, this is a really difficult question to answer without going into a real breakdown of traditional male and female culture in Japan. But essentially, otokoyaku are incredibly unique to Takarazuka, and there is something so transfixing about seeing women transform into ideal prince or hero-like men on stage. That being said, I have so much admiration for musumeyaku, and the lack of focus on musumeyaku in Takarazuka is something I would really like to see change, but I do think it is unlikely to happen. So, given the focus of Takarazuka and fans on otokoyaku, you could probably imagine that most actresses dream of becoming an otokoyaku. But, in Takarazuka, there is pretty much an even number of otokoyaku and musumeyaku. So how is it decided whether an actress will be an otokoyaku or musumeyaku? Well, the decision is made by the actress. As I've discussed in a previous episode, all Takarazuka actresses must first undergo a two-year training program at the Takarazuka Music School, which they attend between the ages of 15 and 18. It seems like the decision to be an otokoyaku or musumeyaku is made shortly after entering the Takarazuka Music School, as the training will differ depending on whether an actress will be an otokoyaku or musumeyaku. However, while the decision is made by the actress, it is not a free choice and it is probably the case that Takarazuka examiners have a good idea when considering applicants to the music school who will be otokoyaku or musumeyaku. That is because the absolute number one deciding factor in whether an actress will be an otokoyaku or musumeyaku is height. In Takarazuka, creating the illusion of a male and female couple on stage is key, but also a real challenge. To allow for this image, otokoyaku must be tall. In the past, it seems around 165 centimetres or above was common for otokoyaku, but now around 170 centimetres can be considered standard. By the way, the current tallest actress in Takarazuka is Okusu Tera, an otokoyaku in the Moon Troupe who stands at 180 centimetres tall. 
Mesomerca, meanwhile, are typically between around 160 to 165 centimetres tall. So 168 centimetres tall acts a little bit like a cutoff. Actresses above that height will typically be otokoyaku, actresses below it will typically be musumeyaku. For actresses who are, whose height is in this cutoff zone, they will actually face a lot of challenges in takarezuka. If you are a slightly shorter otokoyaku, it may be less likely that you will receive a good role in a production because you may not be considered to fit the cool, strong image that otokoyaku are expected to present. If you are a slightly taller musumeyaku, meanwhile, there is a risk that you will look too tall next to otokoyaku, so there may be less otokoyaku who you can be partnered with on stage. Beyond height though, of course, there are other really important factors that go into the decision to be an otokoyaku or musumeyaku. Otokoyaku, of course, must have a deeper vocal range, both singing and speaking, while musumeyaku should have a higher range. Facial features are also really important, with more strong masculine facial features, of course preferable for an otokoyaku. But in takarizuka, height is really key, so it's probably the case that these factors, along with personal preference, only come into play when an actress's height is in that cutoff zone of around 168 centimetres. Once an actress decides to be an otokoyaku or a musumeyaku, this decision pretty much sticks with them throughout their entire career with Takarazuka. There is no middle ground position between otokoyaku and musumeyaku. However, I said pretty much because it is possible for actresses to change during their career, although this is really rare. It also seems like this change is one way only. Otokoyaku can decide to become a musumeyaku. I have not been able to find any example of a musumeyaku becoming an otokoyaku, and given the height and other requirements, this does seem really unlikely. So essentially, an otokoyaku, usually within her first few years of performing with Takuruzuka, can decide to become a musumeyaku. This change is announced on the Takuruzuka website, and you will see the otokoyaku start to grow her hair and dress more feminine to fit the musumeyaku image. This is a really rare change, however, if we look at the current Moon Troupe, there are two young actresses, Amashi Juri and Nanze Keito, who were both previously otokoyaku, who transitioned to be musumeyaku in their first couple of years with Takarizuka. In addition, the former top musumeyaku of the Moon Troupe, Manaki Reika, was originally an otokoyaku, who transitioned to be a musumeyaku after around two years performing with Takarizuka. It seems this decision to change is made by actresses whose height is in that cutoff zone between an otokoyaku and a musumeyaku. So for example, Amashi Judy is 166 centimetres tall and Nanze Keito is 170 centimetres tall. These actresses may consider or receive advice that their prospects as a musumeyaku are much higher than their prospects as an otokoyaku. They may also have the experience of performing a musumeyaku role once and receive very positive feedback from within the Takarazuka Review Company and from fans encouraging their change. So for example, Nanze Keito had performed a musumeyaku role in the Shinjin Koen or rookie performance of Elizabeth and shortly after became a musumeyaku. Amashi Juri, meanwhile, cited her experience performing as a musumeyaku in a review dance number as a key reason for her transition to a musumeyaku. So actresses who transition from otokoyaku to musumeyaku may actually have some advantages. Because otokoyaku are more popular in takarazuka and tend to attract more focus, actresses may be able to carry over this to ensure that they receive good roles as a musumeyaku. However, so much about acting as an otokoyaku versus musumeyaku in takarazuka is incredibly different from the makeup and costume to the singing, dancing and acting and even the way of presenting yourself in interviews. So this transition must be an incredible challenge for actresses. But outside of actually becoming an otokoyaku, there is an extremely common practice in takarazuka of otokoyaku performing a musumeyaku role in one production. It's difficult to estimate, but I'd say at least half of Takarazuka productions have one or more musumeyaku roles played by otokoyaku. So for example, in the Snow Troops production of Once Upon a Time in America earlier this year, the role of Carol was performed by Asami Jun, who is usually an otokoyaku. 
In addition, some productions that are regularly staged by Takarazuka have Masumeyaku roles that are always performed by Otokoyaku. So for example, in stagings of Gone with the Wind, the roles of Scarlet and Belle Watling are always played by Otokoyaku. In addition, it is very common in reviews to see dance numbers performed with Otokoyaku dressed as Masumeyaku. So for example, in the Cosmos Troops production of Aqua Vitae earlier this year, two Otokoyaku, Mirei Jun and Akine Hikaru, both performed as Masumeyaku in separate dance numbers. The opposite, Masumeyaku playing Otokoyaku roles is extremely rare. And the only instances I can really think of is where there is a need for very young male characters but even then, otokoyaku will usually be used. So why are otokoyaku often cast in musumeyaku roles? Well, one of the key reasons is balance. As I've discussed in previous episodes, all troops maintain a very careful balance with the top star on top, then nibante, sambante, yonbante, etc. If a production does not have enough good roles for otokoyaku, there is a chance that a good female role will be given to a popular otokoyaku to ensure the otokoyaku still has plenty of time to shine on stage. Another reason may be that an otokoyaku is considered the best fit for the role. So typically, characters that, have, that need a sort of taller body, deeper voice and more sexy, sultry attitude are portrayed by otokoyaku rather than musumeyaku who often tend to portray more pure seeming characters. For example, sorcerers characters in particular seem to often be portrayed by otokoyaku. Another reason may simply be the popularity with fans. So there's always a huge shock factor when an otokoyaku steps into a musumeyaku role. All Takarazuka actresses are exceptionally beautiful, but it is easy to get caught up in the very handsome appearance of an otokoyaku and forget that underneath is an incredibly beautiful woman. So when an otokoyaku steps into a musumeyaku role and photos and videos start to get released, fans go wild. It is a really fun surprise to see on stage. That being said, there may be a real downside to this practice. That is, where there are good musumeyaku roles, they are often given to otokoyaku instead, preventing more musumeyaku from having the opportunity to shine on stage. While there may be an argument that these roles really need an otokoyaku to give that kind of sultry performance, I have no doubt that a musumeyaku, if given this role, could do an absolute exceptional job. I try to avoid personal commentary for the most part on this channel, but one of the things I feel really strongly about is that I'd like to see more opportunities for musumeyaku to present more than just a pure, lovely persona on stage. There's often an idea in Takarazuka that otokoyaku are strong and cool, while musumeyaku are lovely and sweet. But if you read interviews with actresses, you'll hear that often outside of the public eye, musumeyaku have incredibly strong, tough personalities. So for example, I read an interview with an otokoyaku who said that for most otokoyaku, they could not enter a ghost house, but for most musumeyaku, it would be a piece of cake. I'd really love to see more Musumeyaku able to present this kind of strong personality both on stage and interviews, and just generally I'd love to see a greater level of appreciation for Musumeyaku's exceptional talents. So that is how the decision is made to become an Otokoyaku or Musumeyaku. Essentially, the decision comes down to height. However, if an actress's height is around 168 centimeters, there is some room for other considerations, including personal preferences, to come into play. Otokoyaku may also have the opportunity to perform as a musumeyaku, be it in one production or by transitioning to being a musumeyaku. Musumeyaku, meanwhile, don't really have this option. So, in next week's episode, I'm going to be looking at another very important decision in Takarazuka, as I attempt to answer the question, how are actresses sorted into the different Takarazuka troops? I really hope you'll tune in. And if you've been enjoying this channel so far, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Please take care. Bye.